Chigeto Na Chigeti Geto Na Chigeti Geto Nagame Oya Yubide Kire Ajio Tashka Takash Tak Tashikash Tashi Kamete Kore Mot Taimono Ni Naran To Hori Nageta Perfect. Our first verb is Nagameru Nagameru It is to gaze. To gaze and to get to get to get to get to get to get thought is uh closely. He's 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 look closely at the blade. Naifu naifu no han o to get to get to nageme. Uh oya you be there with the with the thumb. Tire achio tak tashi ka mete. Tashkamete. He confirmed using his thumb the sharpness of the blade. Kara. Afterward, kore mo sukai mono ni naran. This will also not be of use. To hori nageta. Uh, and it's not and, but um, he's quoting it. So right. he's throw he's th he's tossing it by as if it is a thing that is not of use. Perfect. Or in a manner that is not of use. Ore wa sore o hirote. Ore wa sore o hirote. Hiro hiro. I I I picked it up. I possess it. Yep. Um, subayaku pocket on knee swiftly into the pocket. Shimatta, I put it away. Perfect. I pick it up, so I swiftly put it into my pocket. So no sugiwa, and then afterward, uh, chisana, uh, ha ha, ha guruma, ha guruma ya. Piston ya bane nado sabita kinzoku bun kinzoku buhin buhin ga tsumata hakodata. The next item, the next thing is a box <laughs> that was crammed with uh, rusted metal items including things such as uh, small gears pistons and springs right as a question is this right here boonhin or boohin Bu boohin perfect right just want to double check that hi hum nebari wa unatte Nebody hums. Hmm. Hako koto ore ni yukoshita. Nebody he hums and he he hand over to me the box with the items. Right. Ore wa sono hako o goketa suisho dama no tonari ni okuto. I places the I places that box next to Tonari next to the next to the side of the of the crystal ball uh the burnt crystal ball. Right. I places that box next to the side of that burnt crystal ball. Uh, biraba tirabata tirabata kusha kusha no ginkami o 
集め。チラバタ is the scattering about. シャクシャク is the. クシャクシャ is a crumble up. The crumble up、uh, foil that was scattered about. I gather them. ほかのガラクタと一緒に。Together with the remaining junks,、um, ドアのそばに、that is,、um, ドアのそばにまとめた。I piled them up onto the side of the door. Together with the junks, the rest of the junks. Hi, that was a perfect way of putting it together. Yeah, I like how you corrected yourself with the translate the ishoni part here. Because this is hard. Because depending on where we put in the sentence in English, it changes the meaning <laughs> just slightly. Hi. Okay, perfect. Okay, you slideshow. Do you remember how to read this word? This here is to, 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 to. This can be read as sora, which means sky. Tobu, to fly, I think is what you're thinking about, is a different kanji. Tobu. So, sora, to fly, has a separate meaning when it's pronounced differently to mean empty. So, this right here is actually ka, da, karappo. What does harappo mean? Empty.、Hai. And here is hara.、Hai. The empty stomach. Harappo no hara. Perfect.、Um, double checking how to read this word. Hara.、Hmm? It hasn't is, loaded yet. This is、um, ha guruma. Perfect. And how do you read this word again? Karappo. Perfect. Karappo. Karappo. Okay, let's go read the line from the book. Sai sho. The latest, the, 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 the newest. Sai sho no hako ga karappo ni naruto. The newest so, box. Sai sho. Does not mean what you think it means. I think you're thinking about the word atarashi, atarashi, which has an idea of newness. Saisho doesn't have any relationship with the word new, but I suppose new could be vaguely, like the word new could be vaguely related to the word for saisho, but they're very different words. You would never say saisho no hon to mean a new book. That it has a totally different meaning. Saisho, that sho kanji there, as you can see, it's not atarashi, right? It's not new. It is beginning. So, saisho means the most beginning or the first. Saisho no hako is the first box, the box that he first opened up in this context. Saisho no hako, the first box, Shasho no hako ga karappo ni naru. The first box became, yes, it became empty. To, nebari wa, to kama. So this to here mean an. Hi. Is it? It is. Okay. Nabari wa. Sugi no hako ni tori ka kata. Nobody takes, he began to take the next box. Sugi, ni, sugi no. Yeah, hako what does a better way maybe to translate this to begin to take? Right? We don't really say that in English for what it's meaning in this context. To、That's、begin to take. He start. Yes. He starts with the next box. That's just what we say in English. He starts, Start, right? He starts. Literally, he's beginning to take the box again, right? 
um, he's taking a new box into his lap or whatever. But we don't really say that. We just say he starts with the next box. So that's why Torikakaru means to start rather than to begin to take, just because of the weird translation difference there of how we talk. So to, you're correct that to does basically mean and in past tense sentences. Is there a bet like what kind of and is this like what is this referring to like the relationship between this clause and the second clause there seems to be a um, with told with a causal with a causal connection right so that's in, future in, in tense um in in um in general it's kind of true to that but future tense, it is always causative. In past tense, it actually, because everything has always happened in the past and the way in which it happened in the past and there's no way to change the past, everything that happened in the past has already happened. So by default, the cause-effect relationship has already been stated due to having to happen in, <laughs> having had happened in the past. Um, so uh, that doesn't actually matter that much in past tense sentences, but this is past tense with the uh, torikakata over here. Um, instead, it means immediately after this happened, and this is the second thing to happen right after that. So these two things could be 100% unrelated as long as one thing happened after the other. So if this sentence was in future tense, tori ni kakaru, that would actually be an ugly sentence. Saisho no hako ga karapo ni naru to nebori wa tsugi no hako ni tori kakaru. Like you could kind of use it, but it would feel more like cause and effect, like this is what you do. When you finish one box, you have to start the next box. And it would make more sense perhaps to use like tada or something else. But to just means immediately after in past tense. Because like I said, everything that happened in the past has already happened in the past. So it's already has a cause and effect relationship because of that. Because to is used with 100% certainty normally. It's the... So it gets iffy with when, because it should be like always when this happens. It's, yeah. Uh, how do you read these kanji? Yoko, yoko iro no me. Good guess. Yoko. Let's look at that kanji. As you can see, we have a tree added to this kanji. We're at home. Um, no. Yellow is... um. You're yellow. actually very close. It does sound a lot like the word tree. Um, yeah. Nope, it's ki. Ki So when you get yoko and you take away the tree, you have to pronounce it like tree. <laughs> so it becomes ki iro. Iro. Iro no me. The gold eyes. Or the eye yes. of gold. The yellow eyes. Can you read this word for me? Me dama. Perfect. You could probably guess what this means. Eye plus ball means eyeball, just like in English. Me dama. Can you read this sentence for me? Medama. Me dama o hako kara de dashite kita. The, the, um, I take the eyeball out of the box. Perfect. Oh, weird. Very macabre sentence. Very, very, very creepy. The The story we're reading will not be as creepy as that, luckily. Uh, but it was a good way to practice the vocabulary. Let's go read the next sentence. Hiro, hiro i. So the the yellow gears came out of the box. Hi, Hagurama means gears. Ha? I'm Plus, sorry, a two a tooth. Yes, a yellow tooth. Or yellow teeth depends on context. Wani is our next word. A wani is a uh alligator or a crocodile. I think it's an alligator 
but I actually don't remember which one it is because theoretically they are different species and I forgot that I should probably know because they're the same in my head. But yeah, this is a picture of a wani. Um, not a live one though. You can look at its eye color. <laughs> As a hint. Um, can you read this word for me? Haku, hakuse, hakuse. Hakuse means um so like uh taxidermy. Taxidermid. So like the word Haku. stuffed, but specifically taxidermid. So this right here is a picture of a taxidermied wani. Um which is crocodile or alligator is apparently it's the same word in Japanese. So say so I, I agree with you, Japan. They are the same thing. <laughs> Do, do, do. Um, Mane, the yeah. Kaniwani, Kaniwani is basically mean alligator. Yes. That 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 website to learn kanji. Kaniwani. Well, they're, 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 I'm pretty sure alligators are mascot. That's their mascot. So the wani yeah. there means alligator. Yep, and I think Kani means crab. So I think they also they do like a crab monster as their thingy. I think, right. Okay. So they have like a crab, alligator, monster as their mascot. That was a cute idea of them. That's what you got to do. It sounds Japanese. Can you win? Uh, now you get to read the line from the book. Hey, Tono Hako Karawa Garasu no Me Dama to Ki Iro Hao Matsu Motsu 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 Kisana wani no hakuse ga dete kita. So out of that, out of that box, the box that never just the sugi no hako. Hi. Out of that box, gasuro no Medama, a a um glass eyeball. I would look look oh. for the verb first before translating that. I see. Hi. Um, the verb here is motsu. Is it? Um, we have a period here. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That motsu modified chisa na wani. Uh, the verb here is da dete kita. It Ai, came out. Kita. So that means oh. our subject is hakuse. Um, okay, so out of that box came the uh, taxiderm of the alligator, a small alligator that half in its possessions, its motu. It was holding a gold teeth or go tooth and um glass eyeball perfect what's yep. meaning possessed or is it holding in his palm so it would make logical sense to translate in this context uh as in to have or to possess um but motsu could theoretically mean to hold so you would have to know context to know for sure but in general, you're probably going to use motu to mean to possess rather than holding. Because if you're going to be holding something, you're probably going to be modifying motu with more details like moti agaru, which means to ludge something around with you, right? To carry something that is heavy. Like normally you probably would be modifying motu in some way to make it more obvious that you are holding the object rather than just possessing it. So in case you're curious, you could take out that o and that motsu there and say ga aru if you wanted to. They are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, motsu is apparently a little bit more polite sounding and aru is what you'd be more likely to hear someone say out loud. I, I was curious. Okay. I was like, are these the same? And they're like, yes. thought they would be. Hey. Um, what does nozoku mm. mean? Nozoku. Nozoku. Hi. Okay. Nagameru is to gaze. Niramu is to... Oh, nozoku is to peek, to take to a peek. peek. Yep. Nozoku. Nagameru is to gaze. Yep. 
And niramu is to oh the evil eye to glare at someone to give a yeah, bad look. Niramu. Good job. You got these all right without hints. Woo woo. Hi. Okay, let's go read the line. I remember the you told me the I remember you told me that that little uh, character behind the niramu imagine it's like an oni. Yeah, it's like of a course demon. it's not an oni, but it, <laughs> imagine it looks it like to oni. Be a demon. Yeah, definitely makes it easy if you have those little stories to help you make things out. Because you can make these up. There's no rules. Lie all you want. It's great. Don't need to be real. Right. Okay, let's go read the line um, from the book. Nebari wa chotto nagamete ka nagamete. He gays. Okay. Uh, ore ni yoko ni Yoko shita. Already need yoko shita. Iran. I think this is okay, probably so... was kara here. Um, and the da has been dropped. Uh, because I accidentally did that. Because this is a human error. <laughs> but Hi. I would assume it's kara with a nag nagamete. Kara just makes logical sense. It didn't fit. Hi. <laughs> and I deleted it. Okay, the kara come after the tent, meaning that after the action so right. after nobody um gaze a little bit he, after he gazed it a little bit he yokos yokoshita he handed over to me oreni and he right. say iran meaning exactly iranai. So, so. do not right. no iranai is i don't is need iranai? it Doesn't um it? this comes from iru but it's a different kanji than to exist so iru to exist has this kanji and iru to need as in like hitio is that kanji and iru as in to like enter something that is used for like special things uh like compound words like sayaidi um means to enter right to be entered so yeah those are the uh -huh. three irus in japanese um luckily this one is conjugated differently than this one so, iranai, right? The da here lets us know, obviously, it is the I do not need word. While iru, if this was negative, would be inai without the da. It's a root verb. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, that's what that is. Makes it definitely hard to put in the vocab list, though, because it's dictionary form. Ma Ma um, yeah. Mani, I, I, I was told that it is good to learn uh, vocab by learning the negative form because mm. the negative form indicates whether it's an ichidan or godan, whether it's a ru or u verb, just by the negative forms. I mean, because the either, same with mass form it's... though, right? If there's a d here, mass versus form? if there's no d, ma mass would be the same. Um, Genki teaches it with mass form in the beginning. Uh, as like a textbook. And that would be the same as negative. You'd get the same information. So tabe mas, delete mas, tabe means the do verb. While if it's um idimas, right, with a D, idimas, that make it into a stem form. So you know that's idu. Oh, so in this as case, e. real quick money. In this case, if I was to use the mass form to differentiate them, right. the idu for to exist would be imas. imas. Yep, versus irimas. And the iru to need would be i irimas to need. Right, you add the e there, stem form. Irimas. Uh, Basically, uh, theoretically, it's better to learn verbs than anything except for dictionary form. <laughs> as, as funny as that is, because dictionary form, you do miss the if you see it ending with redo, if it's a do verb or u verb. Um, and that's why I think most textbooks do when they do with beginners start with something else. I think Mina no Hongo says this is a group one verb and this is a group two, which when you start giving things like random labels, I I, I like Hi. I can't even remember kunyomi and onyomi because just describe what it is. I don't want to know the name. So that's why Genki is my preferred. Like ta form. It's the form that uses ta. <laughs> te form the form that uses te. like Genki went over to do is like let's not learn the word special words for anything <laughs> call it mas form right that's my Genki Hi. influence 
in, in Mina Nihongo is probably called like a different thing, like present polite form or something like the official name, which describes what it is scientifically, but, which is more useful to know if you're going into like linguistics or going learning in Japan, knowing the one, two, three, they use that method in um, Japanese classes. Um, but for me, I prefer the baby names like married, which I made up and <laughs> non-married, <laughs> things like that. I, I think it's easier not to fill up your brain with too many vocab words. But yeah, perfect. Uh, next line. Hi. Right. So Shita, his past form is suru. Right. So he gonna ni suru something. He gonna koto ni suru. I'm gonna do this thing. Hi. So he did that thing. And that this thing that he did was to morale. Hi. Receive. So ore wa I so no one more. Also this alligator i will re i will receive it i'll take right. it but here i'll take it i'll take it is a definitely a better way to give the english insinuation that the sentence is having i'll take that uh crocodile too <laughs> is definitely the right. the essence of this the perfect yep because if he if, if nobody was giving it to him and he was happy about it he'd use kudeu right <laughs> I received it. it. Yeah, um, yeah. Subject would be yeah, different, but that's what you use yeah. when you're, yay, thank you for giving this to me. And of course, when I was, uh, I've taken this for myself. I receive it. Wink, wink. And what is yellow again? Kiro. Kiro. Yeah, oh. And what's this one? Kiro. A karapo. Perfect. Kind of full. Uh, uh, you said that one right perfect earlier, so I'm skipping that. So this, another, so when that kanji right there means empty and it's a verb, it's pronounced as suku. Suku. Um, so how do you read soda when it's a verb, meaning empty? Suku. Perfect. What is the te form of suku? Sweet Hi. Sweet Okay, let's go read this phrase right here. Probably something that's very familiar to you. Not from our book, but in everywhere else. Onaka ga suita. I'm hungry. So so I'm hungry. So with that, if you take that O away, this is not pronounced as naka. So how would you read this? Hara yeah. ga suita. Yeah. Um, you really won't ever hear hara ga suku. That's like not common. I don't know why the book's doing that. Could be a spelling error or whatever, but it, that's how you'd read it to be hara ga suku. Uh, sorry, hara ga suita. Uh, it should be um hara ga heta or um onaka ga suita is the default ways to do it. Isn't hara and onaka are two separate things? Hara no. refer to the general areas of your stomach, mm. the outside or the surface, right? Onaka is your actual stomach That's with the possibly, food. In it. I never really went to the effort to Google the differences since they both mean hungry. Onaka ga suita and hara ga heta. One of them means mm. empty and the other one means decreased. I uh, I wouldn't say your stomach area has decreased really means any different than my stomach is empty because they both mean hungry. Um, it's possible, but I I just never thought that would be important to Google. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Do you know what kajiru means? Kajiru. Let's see. Muffin. Ah, take a bite. Hi hi hi. How did you do it? Specifically to like more like gnawing on, like it, it is to take a bite. Um, just like there's some words that are more like a chomp down on or to rip a piece out. So this is more like a nibbly bite. Um, rather than hmm. swallowing it whole, you know, like, like some people would be like, I want to eat the whole muffin in one bite. 
Khan's like savoring the muffin. He's taking little bits of it. Um, do you remember how to read this mm-hmm. word? This one's hard, I think. Nakami. Yeah, nakami. What did nakami mean? It's mean here the content, the content Perfect. of his pocket. What is me. the negative form of to gnaw on something? Kajiranai. Perfect. So let's go read this example sentence. Wow. Hmm, hi. Uh, pocket no nakami wa karapo na no de nani mo ka jiran nakata. I did not nibble on something. Okay, so he said that pocket to pocket to nakami wa the content of my pocket karapo na no de because there was nothing. Don't um, think too hard. I did not, I did not yeah. nibble. Yeah, there was nothing anything. in my pocket, so I did not nibble on anything. Um, can you read this word for me? Sukonde. Sukonde. Ippon sukonde. Yubio ippon sukonde mita. Sukonde. Sukobu. I tr- I try. Good. The Do Mita something. here to try, correct. To try and probably succeed. I dips. I, I dip my finger. Yeah, tsukomu is the stab to keep and komu into to stab into. Contextually, he is stabbing into um a tarai, which is a basin, something that holds water in, like a bucket. Um, and he sticks in one finger and goes tsukomu. Cold. That would be the dip in in this context, but it just means to stab into. Normally, not to with a knife, just like that physical poking action to poke. Um, you know what tugi tugi means? Tugi tugi to, tugi 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 tugi. Oh, one by one. Perfect. Um, and I'm actually gonna one. skip take... this second one because you did that you did that was uh testing other things because i knew you struggled with them but you did them perfect earlier today so let's go read the sentence from the book money quickly what yeah. is sato sato? Sa- sa- sato 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 i remember nobody was doing something sato sato one by sato, one sato. the box um... he's opened the box one by one that was tsugi 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 um... okay me you're right. Uh, there's like soto, which means softly, and sasato, which means to immediately start I, something. And here I is soto, soto, which means it's about time. Just just about. We read a sentence that say he take the water crystal ball out one by one, and one was larger than the next. Hi, I'm pretty sure that was tsugi tsugi. Tsugi tsugi. Hi. We could check that real fast by doing um or maybe he was like it it tobi like one every time he takes it out the one was bigger than the next or something like that right uh sui sui so uh and then it was but was uh what was it larger so okisa 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 something yeah na, i'm not na. seeing what you're remembering from here um it says that right here it says nobody he puts that crystal ball next to the chair and he softly puts it on the floor next to um on the carpet next to the chair and then he takes out three more things sarani so he opens next three more um crystal balls. Then it just says Dore mo suishoda. Like I'm not seeing the word you're looking for. I think you just got confused from the soto for softly putting something out. You didn't really use tuki tuki here. Here I went on my knees. I I don't think that happened. Hi, Wakata. Sorry. Sorry to disrupt you. 
it's not disrupting um, it's all learning if we found it then we could have went oh this is what we're looking for um so we left off what was our la- latest new vocab word <laughs> do you remember <laughs> um uh, it was uh no, 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 it was soto soto <laughs> that's a good one soto. so soto soto means about time that's right where we left off. View slideshow. Little soul. Um, so let's go read the line. I'll collect that. About time. Soro soro hara ga suite kita no de pocket pocket ni sukonde dips into oita. Muffin o tori dashi. Tori dashi. Okay. Tori dasu. It takes okay. out a muffin. Sugi right. sugi to hako no nakami o tori dasu. Takes it out. Nebori o nagame nagara to gaze. Kachita. No. Okay. So we have well, some nice say, commas here, which are super duper useful for the sentence. Right. So, soro soro, it's about time. Haraga suite kita no de. Because it is about time that I'm getting hungry. Uh, Poketo ni tsukonde. I. Stuff I poke into the pocket. Oita, I oku, I places. Oita muffin, I shove into the pocket and the muffin that was already in there, I took it out. Toridashi. And sugi sugi to hako no. Uh, hako no nakami o toridasu. Uh, nebari o nagame nagara kachita. I ate, I know, on the muffin while I gazes at nebari. I gaze at nebari and take the content of the box out one by one. Who's taking the contents of the box out? Uh, Grammarly, you should know who's doing it. Hi, this is the relative clause of oh, dasu so. modifying nebody. So here it is. Nebody, I gaze at nebody who's is taking the content of, out of the box one by one. Perfect. Um, remember how to read this kanji? Karada, karada o hanasu, pull back my body, uh, or separate my body. To separate from a body. Um, from it doesn't body. say whose body. I... Contextually, it's probably not the main character's body. In this specific sentence, it's nobody's body the main character is separating from. Um, can you read the sentence for me? This is not karada. It, it is karada. Is... Well, you, you would think Karadaju. it'd be Thai, you're right. You would assume it'd be Thai too. Uh, but it's Karadaju. That is really weird once you pointed that out. I swear it's Karadaju. The midsection. Does it refer to the midsection? No. Nope. The mid of the body? Ju, no. as in middle or as in um, in, inside? It is inside the body, like all throughout the body. So. Not the manaka. It just means within the body. So it's the within meaning of naka. But yeah, it is karadaju. I just double checked because I was like, it is karadaju, but I was like, that is weird grammatic from morphology ness. You know what futatabi means? Futatabi. One more time. Perfect. Once again. Any idea what sokoratu means? Sokoratu. Soko is that thing. Mm, Those so things it. among. Oh, ko is a place. So, 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 soko means that place. 
that place. Ra is a pluralizer. Yep. So, so it's those, those place. places. Among those places. Exactly. Within those places. That's exactly what it means. Within those places, which basically means everywhere. All of those places around. You remember to read this word? Mm, hip. Back. Yeah. Lower and back. it's that lower back hip area. Perfect. Um, any idea to read this word? Kara. Kara hoka. Kara hoka. Uh, what's box in Japanese? Hako. Kara hako. So, um, kara hako is a really good guess, but it should be kara bako for rendaku, right? Kara bak. So, ha bako. Bako. Kara bako. What does kara bako mean? I mean empty boxes. Perfect. And why is this pronounced as kara rather than sora? Because here the meaning is empty and not the sky. Yes, yes, perfect. So this ends with bako. What did it start with? Kara, kara bako. Perfect. Let's go read the example sentence. Uh, the hip reading is, or the back reading is, um, who is it? Uh, ya, yone, yonu? Hoshi. Yane. Hoshi. Koshi o oroshita dorobo wa oroshita was to go down one? Yes. Oroshita. So the thief that went down the back. Yeah, but this means um to set. To set your um koshi downward. Ah, the thief set his his bum down. Exactly. Hi. The three who sat down. Chirabata. Chirabata. Kusha kusha. No. Gingami o mitsumeta. He gaze or he stares. He stares at the um um jumbled up paper foil perfect that was scared about so this right here was o for orosu set down so we have the three different ways the three different kanjis what is the first one oriru what does oriru mean to go down, to go down right, the right. stairs for. Yep. For What's the second one? Agaru. Not agaru. Agaru is to lift up. I'm sorry. Sagaru. Right. To retreat. Perfect. Go back. And the last one. Orosu. To take something down. Perfect. Or to put something. Down. Nice. Do you remember to read this word back from like the first chapter? Mitina. Good guess. It's no, no, no. Jishin. 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 It means oneself. It's a lot like the word jibun, but it's used um in different contexts. For example, it's always going to be modifying a noun like ore jishin, kare jishin, something like that. You can't just say jishin on itself. It should be described. It should be a something you attach to another word. Well, jibun is normally by itself. You don't say ore jibun. That's disgusting, right? You say ore jishin. Okay. I myself. Uh, I guess it's jishin well. Oneself is jibun. I myself. Okay, here's our last line for the day, most likely, unless you read through this super fast, long ass sentence. <laughs> Almost doesn't fit on the page. <laughs> hey. Hey. Nobody got futa tabi heya no. Manaka no isuni koshi o oroshita hoki ni wa nebari jishin mo karada ju hokori ni mamire. 
Yuka ni wa sokoraji, sokoraju ni majutsu no dogu to kara bako to kusha, kusha no gingami ga chirabatte ita. Okay, so nebari is the subject. Futatabi heya no manaka no isu ni koshi o oroshita toki ni wa. At the time when he sat down, when he sat down on the chair that was in the middle of the room, once again. Uh, Nebori himself, Kararaju, the in within his body. Yeah, oh, no. there's a that is a meaning of Kararaju. Uh, in this in this context, I would say it's all on top of the body. But you're right. Uh, within the body would be the logical assumption in here because that is what that word can mean. Uh, it definitely does not mean that in this context. So it means like it means like from head to foot. So uh specifically you want to say in the body you add shin to there. Shin ties you. So karadaju is all on top of the body, sorry. Hey, right, so here is Hokori ni Mamire. Hoko ni. Hokori ni. So a lot of times we say Hokori Mamire, which is a noun, but instead we got Hokori ni Mamire. Which hokori mamire was related to hokori ni mamireru. The difference is that one of them we got two downs and made them turn into one thing. And this one right here we have oh. a verb with a adverb marker for a noun called hokori. We know hokori is our dust or it is dust, dust, right? Hokori ni. So he yep. here the dust is doing something to his entire body. So, his so. mamire. Is mamire. So here mamire means it's it's it it smears. Yes, there's dust smeared all over nobody's um body. Body. And you can knee on the floor. You can knee wa sokora. Sokora to all those places. Those places among all those places. Ma chutsu no. Dogu to Kurap Kara Karabako to Kusha Kusha no Gingami Ga Tirabate da. All on the floor, all about the, the place, um, scattered, um, Paper, uh, crumble, crumble, silver foil, empty boxes, and magic tools. Perfect. And you read that pretty fast, so we will be continuing with our book. Um, I'll skip that. Do you know how to read this word, which means one volume and not volume one? Itsatsu. Yeah, isatsu. Perfect. With that nice uh, glottal stop. Let's go read the line from the book. Nebari wa saigo. Saigo no hako kara tori dashita. Nebari takes out the first box, or no, the last box, Saigo. Itsatsu no okisana hon o teni shiteita. Teni suru. So he takes into his hand, he took a large book, but here's a volume of books. So one of, of the books falls yes. He took a large book from one of the volume into his what? hands. What is what is a volume? I don't think you know what that word means. I'm sorry. Like a volume is it's 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 a whole series of books. 
No, a took- volume oh, is yes. a book that exists within a series. So, for example, um, you could have I have one volume of Demon Slayer, it means I have one Demon Slayer book, and but there's other Demon Slayer books do exist. For example, there's volume one of Demon Slayer and volume two of Demon Slayer, which are the volumes in their correct order. But a volume of a book just means you have a book, a physical book that most likely is part of a series, and this is just one of those books. And it's not telling you which book it is. For example, I have I, three volumes of Natsume Yujinsho. Volume 22, volume 1, and volume, I think, 16. I see they're totally random which succinct will number they are, but they are part of a series. So that's what the word volume means. Um, most likely, Nevery's book looks all like fancy books, like like little fancy like leather kind of looking books. So probably you look at that and it looks like a book that would be part of a series. Um, Khan doesn't know for sure, but that's why we use the Tatsu being like, it looks like he has he took one volume out of the box. The idea is that there's multiple books around and he's taking one of the books out of those books. And it doesn't matter which book he was taking out. Hi. So here it's actually say he take a large volume out. Hi. Exactly. Um, where did he take that book out? He took it out from Hako Kara, uh, but specifically the side goal, the last box. Hi. And where did he put it after he took it out of the box? He takes it into his hand. Exactly. Sitat. So literally it says he puts into his hand a large volume he took out of the bo- of the final box. So we had two basically taken out here. He takes into his hand something he took out of a box. Can you read this word for me? Mu hiyo jo. Hi. So keep a close eye on that center kanji as I want you to read this word. Yoshi. Perfect. Yoshi. Yoshi is the cover of a book. The binding, like cover, um, the cover, cover. You know what this word was again? Kawa. Perfect. For skin or leather. Yes, leather. Um, kawa for skin has a different kanji, which is this kanji. So this, this, so leather is made from skin, specifically normally cow, I think. Um. But when it's been gone through the leathering process, we do use the different kanji here. So it, it is like important to know. So this word started with hyo. What did it end with? Shi. Perfect. Hyo shi. Can you read this example sentence for me? Kawa no hyo shi no hon o hiraita. Here hirai is to open. Hiraku. So he opened the book with the leather bound or the leather cover. Perfect. Just do cover. Um, I, I was just saying like uh, what the cover is made out of. <laughs> what I was trying to say. Um, you can use it for the physical like um design on the cover as well. I don't, I don't know what was my point I was saying. It it just means the cover of the book. So if you don't judge a good book by its cover, he or she would show up if you were trying to translate that idiom. Um, how do you read this word? Ryu, Ryo. Right. Both? Yep. But the second kanji, I can't. Hi. Right. The second kanji here is two possible readings here. In this specific context, they use hashi, which is the better reading because it's the easier one to remember. Um, so ryo hashi means both hashi. A hashi, this is the most common hashi you will see in novels. It is not chopsticks and it is not bridge. This word hashi means ends. But not like the end of the street, but two ends of an object or a location. So if you're talking about a bridge, one end of the bridge is a hashi and the other end is the other hashi. So ryo hashi. In this specific context, um, it looks like 
we are describing Khan underneath a blanket, where on one end, on one hashi, we have Khan's head, and on the other hashi, we have his feet coming out of the blanket. So that's what it's used, and it's very commonly used. So basically, it's used when there's two sides of an object you want to be referring to, like two sides of a sport tanium. That would be two different hashis. So hashi is one of the sides, and dual hashi is both sides. Um, can you read this kanji for me? Hashi. Hi, hashi. So in this case, hashi is a little bit of a weird reading there, just like we saw earlier with a different word that I don't remember. But yeah, that's our hashi. This does have a married reading, which is tan. And this can be read as ryotan, but the book is specifically using ryohashi, which has slightly different connotations. Um, I don't actually know what the difference is. They both mean like both sides. I think... Ryotan might be more metaphysical or something. Um, I was too lazy to read the Japanese for it. Um, let's go read this sentence. Hi. Uh, she no. Oh, not she this no. is Kami. No. Kami. Oh, but when it together with the book cover, it was Yoshi. Hi. Like, tegami no kami. So, uh, sh uh, shi is the married reading. So, hyoshi is very normal. We got hyo, which is a married reading, and shi, which is a married reading. So, it is a cover of paper. It is, yeah, like, like muhojo with facial expressions. It is kami, kami. Kami no hashi. The both sides of the, of the letter. That would be ryo hashi. Oh, no, one of the, one edge of the letter, one I... side of the letter. Kami no hashi de yubi o kita koto ga aru. There is an, uh, the kita koto, the cutting. There is a kita koto. Do you know what koto ga aru with a question mark at the end means? Koto ga aru? Is there, is there, exists? Yep, is there exists a koto? Koto is used to refer to events, right? An action, um, normally some kind of verb that's happened multiple times, normally, koto ga aru. Um, like you're you're making something into a generalizing rather than talking about something very specific about somebody. You're saying everything about this object rather than this one time I used the object or this one time the event happened. Koto. So koto garu means something exists, but something about a thing exists, like events, like multiple uh, actions. So kita koto garu means the events of being cut exist. And when you use this as a question, it means have you ever cut? Have you ever cut? Have you ever cut what? Have you ever cut your thumb with the paper's edge? Perfect. Um, what does Nihon ni ita koto garu? The question mark. Nihon ni ita koto garu. Right. Have you went? To Japan. Yeah, have you ever gone to Japan? Exactly. So you could respond with like, hi, ita koto ga aru. But you probably would say it's mostly using questions. But that koto ga aru is, uh, does this event exist ever, basically? Has it ever existed for you? And you'll see that a lot. Koto ga aru. We've seen it in this book before, I believe. Um, I don't remember where, though. Do you know how to read this word? Normally, you see this as an um, e adjective. Hi, for all something old, but hi, here hi. it is. Fubiru? It's furubiru, because oh, it's from furui. The ru is over the kanji. So, furubiru is very much like the same thing as uh, furoi, but uh, furubiru is a verb, so it's probably going to be past tense, furubita or something like that. And it means to look old. Um, what is the past tense of this verb? The past tense is furubita. Is there a glottal stop in there? 
Furupita. There's yes a bottle no? stop. There's not. We yes. don't go up a stop. No go up a stop. Uh, a do verb. Let's just do the <laughs> come on, let's just do the mass form. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of this is to uh, make it hard. Makes it stick with you. You'd be like, you'll forever be like, no, not Furupita. I won't remember. As soon as I see that rule, everything gets confusing. Oh, oh. Sono karada no hiyo hi. Oh, no, no. Sino kono sono hon no hiyo hiyo shi wa furubita. It was an old, Um, the cover was old. The cover of right. that book was old. Right. Specifically, it looks old, which it would be old normally when you use furubita. Um, but if you just have furui on its own, that can insinuate that an object is old, but isn't like it, this right here is like when you look at a book and it's like maybe got some dog ear pages and a little bit crinkled. Like you look at it and you're like, man, that book looks old, you know, like it, it, it is old. You know, like it's not like a guess. It's not mitai, right? Uh, but it has it's more focusing on the appearance of the object than the actual facts, right? Rather than saying that is a old book, that that cover looks old on that book. So very similar. Like kind of like how a library book would probably look older than a book that you kept on your own bookshelf, even if they were both made at the same time, right? They're both relatively old books, but one of them was well loved. Right. So Furubita would focus more on a well loved book than a book that just sat covered in dust. Does that make sense? Mm, hi. Furubita. Okay. Our next word. Well loved. Tojiru. This is a do verb. Tojiru means to bind, to bind something. Can you read the sentence for me? Tojimasu. Hi. Hi. Uh, shu. Shujin, Shujin, I know it's hard. Right. The owner, no, the resident. Uh, the innkeeper. The resident. The innkeeper. What do you do to the book? Morning. But you're right. Junin is the residence. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're right. What did the resident do to the book? Tojita. They bound the book. Morning. They bound the book. Bound the book. Bound the book. Uh -huh. The resident yep. bounded it. Yep, they bound the book. Perfect. Sorry about that. But yep, the, the resident, the dweller. What is the passive form of Tojiru to bind? The passive form is to. So this is tojimas. So passive is tojirareru. Right. And what does tojiru mean? Tojiru is to bound, to bound something together. Perfect. Can you read this word for me? Fuzoroi. Perfect. So fuzoroi means uneven. We may have seen this word before, but I didn't think about Googling it if we did. For the um, chimneys, we're uneven, I think. Um, what is the stem form? Wait, sorry. So, fusuroi, we see that it ends with a e hiragana character here, but this is not a e adjective. This is a na adjective. Fuzuroi. So, what is the stem form of fuzuroi? Stem form of fuzuroi? Fuzuroi, Fuzuroi, stem form is Fuzu. Ro. Wait, this is a not adjective. Hi. Don't think too hard. What is it? How? What is the stem form of not adjectives? Do you change anything? It's Do you add itself. anything? Yeah, it's just itself. It's just no. Fuzuroi. <laughs> Fuzuroi is the stem form of Fuzuroi. Just doing that because it's like I wanted to stick with you that it's not a D adjective that looks like a D adjective, which is disgusting. How dare they do that to Hi. us? Um, let's go read this example sentence. Furubita hono. 
kami wa fuzoroida fuzoroida um the paper of the book of the of the um i wouldn't say it's old but it's the worn out book yeah the, 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 um, you can just say old in this context i just wanted to specify that so that you have it in your brain <laughs> but it's uh, that it looks old I, um fuzuroi da and we say fuzuroi what, what was fuzuroi again Mom? uneven uneven fuzuroi uneven I, I think this is called like doppled edges in english it's like some weird word when you get a book that has those uneven edges Funnily enough, the English version of this book of The Magic Thief has fuzuroi um, edges. I don't know if you have that copy or not, but it's kind of fun. Uh, uneven edges. Okay, uneven. Okay, so this will be our last line of the day. Fubita, fur, fur, furubita, kawa no hiyoji no Honde Pochirareta Kamino Ashiwa Fuzo Fuzoroi. Hi, can you say cover for me again? Cover is Yoshi. Perfect. Yoshi. So in this case, this is like so uh, at, yeah. De, this day is at location there basically yeah so here or the uh here fozoroida it's uneven what is uneven hashi hashi kami no hashi the edge of the paper that was bounded together were uneven uh in the in the book with yeah. the cover of leather it was worn out. It was old. Yep. The worn out leather book. Leather bound book. So here I guess bound would be how you translate this. You wouldn't want to say leather covered book. The cover of the book was made from that. Like you did like add a lot of words there. So bound would be better in this very specific context. Uh, but it's it just saying the book cover is leather. Right. And it looks and the book looks old. So yeah. Perfect. Um, any questions before we go?